It's not clickbait, it's delivery. Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we are trying out La Vam Bakery, the super Instagram famous cookie spot that pretty much everyone knows about because the cookies are the size of your head. And no, they are not in Seattle. No, I have not gone to New York City. It turns out that they have delivery. And so I ordered them, the incredibly expensive cookies. Oh dear Lord. So of course, before we get to the cookies, gotta ask you to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep bringing you the sweet stuff. I cannot see past my hair. So the cookies. We've got the four cookie assortment, which includes their chocolate chip walnut, the one I'm not gonna eat because I'm allergic to walnuts. If you're confused as to why I have a nut allergy, but I'm willing to eat this, I have a video on oral allergy syndrome, I'll link to it. And also the dark chocolate chocolate chip, the dark chocolate peanut butter chip, and oatmeal raisin. These puppies, these hefty puppies, this is actually quite a lot of cookie. These guys were $27 for the four of them. And then on top of that, I paid $19 for shipping. Ouch. But I was curious. We're in a pandemic. I'm not getting to New York City anytime soon. And why not? I definitely feel the privilege in buying these cookies though. These are, nah. There's a lot of hopes writing here, for sure. And also these came with instructions. That is, I have to put all of them in a 350 degree oven for a little bit to warm up before I taste them. So let's try them. One thing that concerns me was that they mentioned in the description under care that the cookies will be very well sealed. So if they're stuck at the post office for a day or so, they're gonna be okay. This doesn't look that sealed. And honestly, you can kind of see all the little cookie bits that got everywhere. Say you were having a little bit of a time in transit. So that does concern me for how delicious these cookies will be after two days in the field. All right. So we've got the cookies. They were in a 350 degree oven for five minutes and I wish we had smell vision It smells amazing in here. It's very cocoa and fudge scented and chocolate and we have the three giant cookies. Let's start with the oatmeal raisin. <laughs> so much for that grand reveal. Look, I got this little piece at least. I do really like how studded with raisins this is. Like this is, you're gonna have to really like raisins if you're getting this cookie because it's, that's like a quarter raisin. Oh, cheers. I am really distracted by how many raisins are in this cookie. For a cookie that's been in transit for two days, you'd think it would dry out a bit. No, it's pretty soft. It's got far less of a crisp exterior than you might expect because it just goes for the soft interior, but you'd better like raisins. Like this should be called the raisin oatmeal cookie. There's so much raisin. All I'm getting is raisin. Like it's a straight up raisin. I mean, look at this little crumb it still has two giant raisins in it. Like, oh my goodness. I mean, I taste the oats, they're there. But what I'm mainly tasting are just these very soft chewy raisins and then a hint of oat and a hint of crunch. It reaches a target market of oatmeal raisin fanatics I had not seen catered to before ever. So I'm sure someone out there is thrilled this cookie exists. For me personally, I'm not a huge raisin person in my oatmeal raisin. I like the oatmeal before the raisin, but I still think it's a really lovely cookie. Like it's a really great snack time cookie. And honestly, that chunk I had was plenty. Like that, that cookie could feed six. Next cookie. Next we have what I think is the chocolate chocolate chip. I'm guessing because I looked at the backsides of both of these and this one's got this nice dark backside and the other one has suspicious brown marks on it that make me think peanut butter, not chocolate chip. So let's try and crack this one open properly. <laughs> like the oatmeal raisin, this is just stuffed with chocolate. Like how much chocolate is in this? I'm wondering if this will need salt. My magic rule is when it's a chocolate cookie, I kind of want to add salt and nibs. That's just my jam. But there's so much chocolate in here. I'm wondering what percentage it is. So LeVan Bakery says semi-sweet, which is not enough info. We need percentages, we need info, we need sourcing. So my guess would be this is likely Calibo guitar or Valhona, more likely Calibo or guitar just because Valhona doesn't offer a lot of things called semi-sweet. So semi-sweet, generally refers to around the 40 to 55 percent range in cacao kind of there, there's no fda for any of this it just means it's not milk chocolate and it's not dark congrats it's also got a lot of cocoa in it so hopefully this will be nice and chocolate and fudgy and tasty which helps it's got warm chocolate in it well i'm excited cheers that's not a cookie that's fudge with a crispy exterior it is super dense and fudgy. And then you get the tiniest bit of sweetness from the chocolate chips. Like those, this tastes like eating a flourless chocolate cake with chocolate chips in it. It is surprisingly tense. Like I really would like some levity actually, like some milk. I would go for some milk right now. 
My goodness, there's a lot of cookie action happening. How does anyone eat these in one sitting? I'm gonna be full off of like six bites. I could see plating this with like some whipped cream and a nice raspberry sauce and calling it a dessert and I'd be happy. I, I may have to make that after I film. I really just want something to cut through how intense this is, is all I want. There's a lot of chocolate in here. Ah, you're crumbly, you're crumbly. Last, not least, chocolate peanut butter. So when I was an undergrad, I got really into the idea of the monster cookie. It's this recipe that's basically like the barest amount of cookie dough and as many toppings as you can shove into it. Apparently the recipe was a big thing in Disneyland and I just was like, yes, let's make cookies with 50 ingredients as toppings. That sounds great. And this is really reminding me of it. There's so many little bits of peanut butter in here that it's just kind of intense and very gooey. And may I not burn my tongue in addition to my finger? I've got enough burns for one day, but cheers. <laughs> it's a very sweet peanut butter, very traditional peanut butter, kind of reminds me of Jif with a little bit of an edge to it. And that does actually help against the intensity of the fudginess of this cookie. So if you were like, oh, the chocolate chocolate chip is too much for me, this might be the one for you. It's still very fudgy and still like, six servings, one cookie. This one actually would be even better with milk, even more so than the dark chocolate chip. I feel like this would be great with milk because then you have that milk, peanut butter, after school special kind of thing going on and that would be awesome. So those are three of the four cookies from the Van Bakery. Clearly I'm gonna skip the one I'm allergic to, but that was a fun time. Would I do this again? No. It's probably a much more fun experience to go with friends. I'm really someone who likes going and getting desserts in person. And I think it's a more magical experience if you go to the Van Bakery and you split a cookie there, period. This was meant to be just a fun thing to do in the pandemic because, well, I haven't been outside since March. Also, my problem is really the price. For the price of these cookies, which are $46 with shipping, I could have gone and bought some of the best craft chocolate in the world I could have used the Toak chocolate and then added the fanciest salt I can get my hands on in Seattle and then use all the fancy ingredients in my house and probably have spent less money. On the flip side, it's still cheaper than going to New York City and I actually am really glad for accessibility options and these desserts that are just so hyped on Instagram you can't go to New York because it's so expensive because really it's cheaper than flying to New York City. I still think I would rather go to Levan Bakery, but I have the privilege and the ability to do that and probably have enough airline points thanks to shopping in a pandemic to hopefully do that in 2021. But not everyone can get to New York City and so it's really nice to have the option to order something special even if it feels a bit silly to spend 50 bucks on four cookies. <laughs> Like, I love the idea of like a chunk of each with a different dessert sauce. Ooh, and some unsweetened whipped cream and nibs and salt on the side so I can make everything like exactly the way I want. And oh, that would be a feast. I would have the best time. I'll probably do that after this video's over actually. 